Now let's start calculating slope. <clears throat> so we have different formulas for slope that all really represent and mean the exact same thing, but we kind of use them differently depending on what information I have or what I'm needing to do. So here we go. The first one is when I'm given two points. So I'm going to have slope equals, which slope is my M, and we can do Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, or you can flip your ones and your two. So we can do Y1 minus Y2 all over X1 minus X2. Doesn't matter the order, as long as you subtract in the same direction. So either two minus one, two minus one, or one minus two, one minus two. You get the same result no matter what. For this lesson, that's all we're, the only type that we're gonna be using. Now, when I'm given graphs or tables, I want to use more of delta y over delta x, which if you go on to higher math classes, pre-calc, calc, and so on, you wanna be kind of familiar with delta. I'm not sure how many of you guys are going that far in your math studies though. But delta stands for the change in. So we have the change in y over the change in x, which is exactly what that formula is doing right here. When you subtract, you're finding the difference or the change in your x values over the change in your y values. When it comes to graphing, what we'll be using is rise over run. And so you can see all of that here in this diagram. I hate that these diagrams always show below because I always go from the bottom point up to the top point. So here, when I do rise over run, what's the difference from this point to this point would be the rise, which is subtracting my Y values over my run right here, which would be subtracting my X values. Okay, so delta y over delta x or rise over run or y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Okay, so let's practice. Oh, no, let's not practice. Let's go over. We've got different types of slope here. So the first type I have is if my line is increasing from left to right, then this is an increasing slope. And increasing slopes always have a positive slope. So then opposite, if it is going down from left to right, then we have a decreasing slope. And decreasing slopes are always negative slopes. Okay, what else can happen? We can have a horizontal line. And if we have a horizontal line, then this is a slope that equals zero. Now the last one that we kind of sort of have, if I have a horizontal line, then I could have a vertical line. But <clears throat> vertical lines are not a function back from less than one. We went over that vertical line test. If I have a vertical line, it definitely doesn't pass that vertical line test. So this one here is not a function. So I don't think you're actually going to have any questions over vertical lines. It should be just these three, I would think. Vertical lines, not a function. These all pass those vertical line tests right there. So let's calculate now. We want to find the slope of a line that's passing through these two ordered pairs. So what I would do first is label your ordered pairs. Your first point here 
is your x1, y1, because ordered pairs are always in the form of x comma y. So this is my first point. This is x1, y1. Then my second ordered pair would be x2, y2. Ones together, twos together, and it's always x, then y. So now let's find the slope. Okay, I'm going to write my formula. And we have y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now that I have my slope and all of my points labeled, this is just straight substitution. My y2 is labeled as 4 minus y1, which is a negative 5. So now let's just go ahead and write it. So minus a negative 5. So why do I have two negatives there? Minus from this formula, and then what are we subtracting a negative 5? Then my y2 is negative 2 minus my y1, which is 1. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit. 4 minus a negative 5 minus a negative becomes plus. So this is 4 plus 5. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. So I have 9 over negative 3. So I have a slope of negative 3. Now, you can either just watch or you can write this down. Your notes are completely up to you. But I want to show you that this works this order too. So I can also have y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Still y over x, but I've switched the order here. So y1 is now negative 5 minus y2, which is 4. My x1 is 1 minus x2, which is negative 2. So I'm going to skip that step this time. Minus a negative 2 becomes a plus 2. So on the top, I have negative 9 over 3. So this still equals negative 3. So it does not matter the order in which you subtract as long as you're staying consistent. You can't do 2 minus 1 and then 1 minus 2. That will throw the sign off. Okay. Um, I think I want to go to the next one. Yes. Go to the next page. Example 5 here. An object is dropped off of a 1,000-foot building. After one second, the object is 1,440 1, feet in the air. After five seconds, the object is 800 feet in the air. Assume that the relationship between time x in seconds and height y in feet is linear. So they're telling me how to write these ordered pairs here. They say time x in seconds and then my height y in feet. So if they want us to find the average rate of change, that should send a light bulb off in your head. The average rate of change is the same as slope. And we just covered how to find slope using either of these versions of our formula. So let's make our ordered pairs. After one second, we're uh, 1440, and it needs to go seconds, your time, comma, the height, your feet. So my first ordered pair here and is 1, comma, 14, 40. Then my second one is after 5 seconds for 800 feet. 5, 800. So if we want to find the average rate of change, find the slope. This is my x1, y1, x2, y2. My slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 
I have my formula. I have everything labeled substitution simplify. Y2 is 800 minus Y1, which is 1440 over X2 is 5 minus 1, my X1. So what is... 800 minus 1440 gives me negative 640 over 4 and that's going to give me negative 160. So this is my average rate of change is negative 160 and then B says the height is decreasing at what rate? So here we need some units. It's still going to be negative 160, but what are my units here? Let me find another color here. Let's go purple. If we're subtracting our y on the top, y was in the unit of feet over my x's, which were in seconds. So this is decreasing at the rate of negative 160 feet per second.